the world without visas, around the world with Valery Shani. Turkey is not only beaches and hotels on all-inclusive. In this country there are mountains, rivers, antique ruins, woods, gardens and hospitable locals. The most convenient way to see it all at once is to go on the trail. The St. Paul's Trail begins 20 kilometers from Antalya. It was laid at the beginning of the 21st century by the Englishwoman Kate Clue in those places where, at the beginning of the Christian era, passed the Apostle of New Belief. The campaign on the St. Paul's Trail became the next stage of the World Without Visas project, within which Valery Shannon travels only around the countries visa-free for Russians. On this trip, Minor Klementieva became his fellow traveler. Turkey, St. Paul's Trail. We have begun the travel on St. Paul's Trail. We left the airport on foot to the main highway. We are now trying to go hitchhiking on the turn to Aspendos, where the track begins. Hitchhiking doesn't work yet, but there is still a chance to catch a ride. Travelers have reached the ruins of Aspendas easily and quickly, but the beginning of the trail didn't manage to be found. Neither the staff of the museum nor locals could help us find it. It was necessary to go at random, being guided by an internal voice. The general direction was towards the north, to the lake Igridir. Morning fog isn't terrible, it's impossible to lose the track, especially as it has not been found yet. Again, it's necessary to go by the compass, strictly to the north. A car passed along the way. Firefighters hurried to extinguish the pine woods, ignited by a thunderstorm during the night. Recognize eagerness, but a little too late. Almost everything has already burned out or was cut down. Hitchhiking in Turkey is remarkable. The drivers pick up everything that moves. In the same place where nothing moves, it is possible to walk on the roads as easily as on pedestrian tracks. And there are no pedestrians visible, only shepherds with goats or sheep. As soon as Valeri and Mainur came to the highway, they hitched a ride directly to the canyon of Kuprulu. The locals assured us that they saw red-white marks around this canyon, which designate the St. Paul's Trail. Perseverance and persistence have brought a natural result. After three days of fruitless searches, the travelers came to the trail and already began to strictly follow the marks. Here are real tourists, so many of them. The Kuprulu Canyon, a touristic place. Here come lovers of rafting and canoeing. There are off-road excursions on SUVs. The track crosses the Kuprulu Canyon and begins to rise up on its western slope. In the beginning, smoothly, then more and more abruptly. Now, Valeri and Mainur are not just walking anymore. They have to climb. Without having the habit of climbing, it is hard. Well, cool, cool. But later you will give me water. I have no water. But the rise is successfully overcome, and the travelers enter a stone forest with bizarre rocky formations. And in the village of Altinkaya, we're waiting, a friendly dog, a nourishing breakfast, and the ruins of the ancient city of Selgi. From the amphitheater, located directly on the rustic surroundings, the track leads to the Acropolis through a half-ruined gate, 
on the hilltop. Tourists are seen seldom here. Therefore, there are neither entrance tickets, nor a fence, nor protection. In general, there is nothing, and nobody. There were only heaps of the split stones from the pagan temples and the early Christian churches, and the base of walls here and there. But it does not matter. The view from above is remarkable. There is still no body on the trail, neither passing us or coming in the opposite direction. The travelers are guided by marks, feed from the wild, scare away curious donkeys, and try by all means not to get off the trail, winding among fancy rocks. When it became dark, we set up the tent. It became cold in the mornings. It was necessary to go almost in full gear, as it is the case in winter. The trail leads upward, higher and higher, but at the same time does not become colder. Every hour the October sun burns stronger and stronger. We even have to start undressing ourselves. The trail leads to the village of Cavustiepe. The village is small, but it has a guest house, designed for those who follow the St. Paul's Trail. They are very hospitable, offering tea, jam and pies. The owner of the guest house, Ertin Sparja, helped to pave the St. Paul's Trail. As proof, he has shown us all the photos in which he is depicted, at least from a distance and from behind. The book describes the route by days. This is important for those who travel without a tent, from guest house to guest house. There is also a map according to which it is possible to be guided by districts. With it, travelers no longer have to go at random. However, initially, no book or map were necessary. From Cavustiepe, the trail goes all the time along the river. It is impossible to lose the way, even with a strong desire. On the left and on the right, mountains. There is only one direction, towards north. Slightly to the left or to the right, slightly above or below, but all the time approximately in the same direction. This is real mountaineering. There is no lack of water on the trail. Everywhere there are small rivers, streams, sources, pariks, wells, tanks and troughs. And in each village there is at least one general rural source. Furthermore, the water appears to be clean. Tourists are still not visible, but nevertheless, we occasionally come across locals on the trail, boat on foot and astride. We also meet hunters, Russian-speaking, very old probably, long, long ago, or shy shepherds. The trail has led to a plateau overgrown with rare trees, cut by deep ravines and canyons. And then, as it later turned out, a unique case. The travelers saw two backpackers on the trail. In the course of two weeks, no other hikers with backpacks were seen before or after this. So we were all alone. However, the place was deserted, but not wild. Towards the evening, the travelers came to the village of Kasimla and spent the night in a guest house. We had a home-style breakfast in the morning, tasty and nourishing. We were therefore on our way, later than usual. Hard-working Turkish women already came back home from the woods and fields. There are no highways here yet, a cartridge is required. 
God has sent spring water and wild apples for lunch. Mm. Mm. And again, the trail leads up and up all the time. The first inhabited area, the open fields, herd boys with goats. But gradually, the trail takes the travelers farther and farther from human housing to the woods and mountains. Greeks once lived there, Orthodox Christians. There were only ruins left from the churches constructed during the Byzantine Empire, sometimes very picturesque. The spring beats directly from a hollow tree. Imagine, from a tree, a spring. Did you ever seen one before? The year turned out to be fruitful, even for the wild apple trees. Here, hunger and lack of proteins is not a threat. They roll down at the traveler's feet, but they pass so quickly and unexpectedly that it is impossible to catch them. The roads, which are obviously laid for lumberers or desert, neither cars nor pedestrians, cattle wander freely as wild. At the beginning of October, in the south of Turkey, it is sunny and warm. But towards the evening, it quickly becomes colder. Puddles become covered by a thin film of ice. The fire at night saves us. And in the mornings, there is no wish to get up early. But the sun will rise and the air will warm up immediately. The trail is a complex network of tracks connected among themselves paths, roads and glades. The marks and indexes placed on the way help not to go astray, but they don't always help. It is especially difficult to be guided in the wood. Marks on trees are noticeably worse than on stones. There are so many stones in the woods, it is necessary to go carefully. There is no place to hurry to. We have a tent. When the night falls, we will set up the camp wherever we are. However, towards the evening, even after such a slow walk, my legs are tired. On the suburb of the village of Sagrak, the trail passes through ruins of the ancient city of Adada. It is not a touristic place, therefore there is neither fencing nor entrance tickets here. At the time of St. Paul, the city was already here, but it was smaller. All structures which we see today were built after Paul the Apostle. The Temple of Trojan, the Temple of All Emperors and the Temple of Zeus. And along with them, ruins of the Christian churches relating with the 3rd, 4th and 5th centuries of Christianity have also remained. Sometimes, the trail comes to the asphalted highway, but as a rule, there are no cars. Soon the trail has curtailed into the countryside, to the fields plowed for winter, pensive cows and almost deserted villages again. On the way, we unexpectedly meet barriers. Fortunately, they are easily surmountable. This one you need to hold, the top one, not like this. Press the top one, and without haste, slowly, slowly, you are in a hurry. How slowly, very abruptly. So here, we climb up a steep slope. Luckily, there are trees projecting a shadow, therefore going is not so hot and not so hard. The 
villages are located only in valleys of the rivers. Between them, in the mountains, it is only possible to see shepherds, and even then, infrequently. This year, it became cold earlier, at night, it generally freezes. In the morning, the travelers strayed from the trail again. Don't break. And I can't even imagine how to climb here. I rolled. Rolling, that's cool. Throw your leg over. Okay, you could lay down on your belly. Yes, it turned out to be quite difficult to climb the fence. Ahead, one more fence needs to be climbed as well. It is not clear where we are. Somehow, we should pass through this garden. In early October, it is the highest season for harvesting apples in Turkey. It's only early morning, there is nobody in the garden. But the results are obvious. It seems like someone was picking apples during the night. If the trail goes to the road, then it is better not to walk on it, swallowing the dust. It is better to go hitchhiking. Typical vegetable warehouse, only instead of potato, apples. But they are treated in the same way, without ceremony. Loaded in dump trucks and stored directly under the open sky but only for the fruits intended for processing in apple juice. The same apples that will get to our table. Most of them were exported to Russia and sorted by hand. It is the peak time of harvesting. There is such a lot of work that it will require the hands of all the local people, even pensioners and housewives, and women, as always, appear quicker. Now the places have gone deserted again. Shepherds' shelters are now abandoned. It looks like all shepherds were mobilized for collecting and sorting apples. Listen, Valieri, let's go more slowly today. My legs are tired. In the morning, Valeri and Mainur have finally lost the marks. As in the early days on the trail, we just walked up the road in the direction of the north. The Igridi lake is nearby. We only need to rise by the next mountain ridge and to go down from it. Slightly further, we will come back on the trail again. But we didn't manage to find it, so it is necessary to go along the road down to the highway. In the village of Valkira, there are a lot of apples too, and people are very hospitable here too. And of course, everyone wants to treat us heartily. Thanks, thanks. The travelers chased apples on the way to the Igridir lake. In two weeks, Valeri Shannon and Mainur Klementieva have covered about a third of the St. Paul's Trail. Two more thirds remain for future campaigns.